I just want to share on a very simple truth this morning that I think is very, very relevant because I don't know if there's anybody else here believing for the supernatural. Anybody else here? All right. And that experience that Joe shared with us this morning that happened over in Israel is a supernatural event. Isn't that exciting? I think it's absolutely tremendous. But we ain't seen nothing yet. Because Ezekiel talks about a river flowing from the throne. You know, there's been a lot of things that have been coming out lately. God's going to do a new thing. And it was mentioned this morning. And uh, we could share on so many things and the importance of having expectation and the call of God, which I am going to mention. And also the word of truth and, you know, government is upon his shoulders. There's so much. Even could share about, does the devil use Christians? There's so much. You know, the, 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 the Word of God is so, uh, you know, it covers everything. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely amazing. And so, you know, uh, last week, uh, Pastor Neil was sharing a little bit about uh, picking up our game, if you remember. And he talked about uh, receiving Jesus as Saviour, but also growing and making him Lord of your life. And I want to share a little bit, pick that up this morning and move on from there and just to give you a very simple understanding. Because this verse of scripture that I've been very exercised in lately is that verse that's found in John chapter 14, verse 30. And this is about 14 hours, so theologians say, before Jesus was crucified. And you know, a lot of things happened after that. From that point on, he went into the garden. And that's where the disciples fell asleep. Next thing, Peter cuts off a serpent's ear. And then the next thing we find that he's before Pilate and they said, crucify him. A lot of things. But the statement that Jesus had was this. The devil has come, but he has no claim or part on me. Isn't that something? And I believe if we're going to lift our game, if we're going to enter into the supernatural, We've got to look at some of the things that Jesus said and did. And here he was about to be crucified and the devil was out to destroy him and the whole world and what, you know, that's the story of the devil. But Jesus says these words. He says he's come, but he has no claim on me. Isn't that something? I tell you, you think about that because you look at it and you see he's still going to be crucified and everything like that, but he had no claim He had no authority in that sense over Jesus. And so I've been very exercised with that scripture. It's gone over in my spirit over and over again because I believe that we're in the days where we need to know how to stand regardless. We are living in that day. We need to be able to... I could tell you testimonies that happened to me in the last few weeks that, you know, once I would have went under but not anymore, (laughs) right? The devil try this, he'll try that, he'll try everything, right? My bill is about $10,000 on the car and I'm driving it home and oil's still shooting out the dipstick. (laughs) That's because it's done a million miles of motor that I bought and uh, the compression gets down into the sump and so I'll be uh, uh, ringing a a guy on uh, the boss of where I bought the... uh, engine (laughs) and explaining a few things to him (laughs) on Monday morning. But to see, the thing is, that doesn't faze me one little bit. Honestly, it does not. The devil will try and stop what I feel called of God to do, and he has no part, no claim in me at all. Isn't that something? And I believe that every one of us, and I want to share a simple truth this morning, there are so many places we go, we know the government is upon his shoulders. We know that Jesus, you know, he is in control of everything. We know that he can form a cloud to stop ISIS from getting into Israel. Our God can do anything. He can open the Red Sea. He can, you know, he's he's absolutely amazing, the God we serve. What a good, good father we do serve. Are you with me this morning? And understanding, people say, Kendall, how come you and Ruth, you know, you just keep going, keep going? Well... Because we've began to realise there is a higher level than just living in the natural. Our God is a supernatural God. He is absolutely a supernatural God. In creation, he just spoke the word, didn't he? 
That's all he did. And what happened? Supernaturally, light came. Right? He, he's a supernatural God. And so I want to talk a little bit this morning about understanding the supernatural and give you a little bit of an idea so that we can lift our game and we can begin to be people that stand firm and strong regardless and realise Jesus is Lord. Amen? And so he is. He is Lord. And so John 14, 13 is the verse that's been really kicking over in me as I've already quoted this morning that the devil has come, but he has no part in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants us to lift our game. And so this book is God speaking to us. And this book, the promises in there are supernatural. That's part of what I want us to get a hold of today is that what God has said and what God says to us is to do with the supernatural. It's all to do with the supernatural, right? You've got to understand, you can confess the word as much as you like and you need to do that. But if you don't see the words that you're confessing, have the supernatural backing of God behind them, you can confess till you're blue in the face. Yeah. Right? So if God gives us a promise, just as he spoke in the beginning, and it is supernatural, then it will come to pass. See, according to your faith, be it unto you. And if we can get a hold and see that what God has said is supernatural, what we're doing is we're moving from the natural into the supernatural. Understand what I'm saying? And we've got to begin to have that revelation. I pray that revelation will hit every one of us this morning that this book is a supernatural book. It's not like the Book of Mormons or the Quran and those type of things. It is a supernatural book. There's something different about this because we have the God of the universe behind the book. Yeah, yeah, right? So, I might confess the word, but if I just confess it because it's a word, what advantage is that to me? But if I see that that word is supernatural and I confess that word, then the supernatural begins to happen. I know. I've experienced it. When... I first started to come here, I saw Neil working extra hard and I went to put out the signs that we put, like to put out on the road, let people know and kicking off. You know that I could hardly walk. I was booked into the hospital to have a hip operation too, right? And so I continued, I had to hand them over for a little while. I was in so much pain running down my leg and in the side of my hip and you know, and I'd sit in the meetings and believe in God and, you know, and all that type of thing. But it wasn't long after that I was putting the signs out again saying, thank you, Jesus, I can put these signs out. <laughs> so it was a blessing to me, Neil, yeah. to be able to stand firm and God began to heal because when I went back to, for them to, you know, to book me in to have a hip replacement, they said, you don't need a hip replacement. <laughs> Isn't that something? See, I'm talking about rising up to a new realm to know that this book, the promises in this book are supernatural. They are supernatural. You've got to see it like that. If you don't see it like that, it won't be of much vantage to you except your mind will begin to understand the promises and everything like that. See, God's bringing us into a place where we can stand regardless. God's working on a group of people today that know what it's like to be in an army and stand even when the battle's in front of them. God's causing people today to move to that new realm that Pastor Neil's always talking about. The freshness, the, the, the dynamics of Christianity is the supernatural. That's the supernatural. So even when we look at very simple verses, John chapter 3, verse 16... 
Let's look at that particular verse. I want you to see something, and we all know this verse very well, because it says, For God so loved the world. Right? Now we look at love and we think, you know, that love is just a, you know, all sorts of things. People have all different understandings of what love is. But the God we serve is a supernatural God. And because we are trained and taught and everything, we become performance orientated, don't we? Like, you know, if you perform well. But this love that God's talking about here is a love that is not by performance, right? It is, you know, it's good to perform. I'm not saying it's not good to perform. But even when we do the wrong thing, he still loves us. <laughs> Amen? He loves you even when you do the wrong thing. That's the type of love he's talking about here. But I want us to look at this, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Is that supernatural? It is. That is a supernatural act. A supernatural thing that happens, but have everlasting life. That's supernatural. Can you see how supernatural the promises of God are? All right, let's look at verse 36. Verse 36. It'll come up on the screen there. I want to, this may seem, you know, simple, but it is a very powerful, simple truth that there are a lot of Christians that are trying to serve God, trying to live a normal life. Sure, they get saved. And it's great to be saved. Amen. It's great to know your name's written in the Lamb's book of life and you have eternal life. And that's something that goes on and on forever and ever. I'm glad that I'm saved and glad for salvation. But in verse 36, it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. That's a supernatural thing. It's not just a natural thing. We're talking about these simple promises. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Right? It's, the supernatural is that now I have eternal life. All right, let's go to the next scripture. There we will find it. Um, John chapter 5, verse 4. It says there, right? Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Is that a supernatural thing? Yes, it is. And when I quote that scripture, I just don't quote it because this book says so. I quote it because the supernatural God that I serve that is behind this particular scripture says that I'm born of God, therefore supernaturally I can overcome the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So... If I can get you to see that everything recorded in the word, whether it's lay hands on the sick or whatever, that there is a supernatural act of God behind it, you will rise to a new level. Hallelujah. You will begin to move out of where you are into a new freshness and you begin to understand that God is with you. Isn't that something? Amen. See, it, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's so true. And so I can stand and say the devil has come, but he has no part in me. Hallelujah. He has no claim on me. He may try his hardest, but he has no claim on me. A lot of Christians don't even know how to resist the devil. So just by taking that one stand, because I serve a supernatural God, just taking that stand that he may try, but he has no part of me, is resisting the devil. It's telling him that you're finished as far as I'm concerned because Jesus, the supernatural God that sent his son and I've got an everlasting life and destroyed the devil and all his works on the cross. Therefore, I can stand and I can say, mate, you have no part in me, get lost. That's the way you need to talk to him. And I've done that many times. Get lost, you rotten, whatever you, you know, use good English though. Um, <laughs> Neil's very wise, he calls him hairy legs. 
All right. And so here we are, the importance of understanding that if we believe on the Son, even that scripture that we all, all of us probably know very well, has everlasting life, is supernatural. It is supernatural. Every promise in this book, the book, is supernatural. All right? It is supernatural. This is the realm that God is calling every individual to move in and to walk in and to stand firm in. Right? Because we are heading for the greatest revival that's ever, ever hit the face of the earth. If you look in Ezekiel and look at the river that's going to flow from the throne right down here onto this planet, man, there is life in that river. There is healing in that river. There is deliverance in that river. The trees that grow beside it are going to be like great palm trees and they're going to flourish. See, folks... I am so excited because I live in the most exciting time in history. (laughs) Hallelujah. But I've got to have that simple truth of understanding that this word is supernatural. Get my drift this morning. It is supernatural. Let's turn to uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15. And verse 16. I want you to understand. Now, a lot of us would know a little bit about Jeremiah the prophet. But this particular time, he was going through a pretty hard time. He got rebuke. And I tell you what, if you want to live a life and don't want to get any criticism, don't want to have any rebuke, do nothing. (laughs) Just sit back. Do nothing. You won't get criticism. Poke your head up, mate, and people will try and chop it off all the time. Well, this is where Jeremiah was at. But I just love this particular verse, verse 16. And this is what he said, and this is the step. This is what confession does if you've got your believing and your faith with it. He said, what happens here? He says, your words were found, and I ate them. So here's Jeremiah going through a very hard time, and he said, all of a sudden I found your word. In other words, it was like eating beautiful food. Here, your words, Jeremiah found in the midst of the situation because he realised how important the words of God were. And this is the word of God to us. And he says, I ate them. I devoured them. I took a hold of them. I realised that God's word Words were supernatural, right? They were food. Your words became to me a joy and a delight on my heart. For I am called by your name. He realized he was called by God's name. O Lord God of hosts. So what do we do? We eat the words. We confess the words not only just confess them because it's a good book and they're good words and they help us, but confess them realising that whatever that confession is has the supernatural with it, right? When you prayed, said, God, hold up that card, the supernatural began to work. Amen? You see what I'm saying? So, whatever it is, whatever your need is, hold it up. And let the supernatural that's behind the word, my word will not return unto me void, but will accomplish that wherein it is sent. It is spirit and it is life. And if you want to understand what I'm trying to share this morning, because I've learned it myself and I'm learning it and I'm learning more all the time, is that I realize that if I confess like Joe was talking about the cracker or whatever, it is not just a cracker behind that bit of cracker that we eat in is the supernatural that's That's why a lady got healed you see what I'm saying and so our communion times need to be far greater than what they are it's not a form it's not just something that we do it has the supernatural behind it and God is calling every one of us to rise to that place where we take the word as a supernatural promise not just words we say or speak, or whatever, but they are promises. So, 
If I say I'm a new creation, it's not mere words. It's a supernatural thing that's happened. Right? I've become a new creation. Old things have passed away. Hallelujah. And all things have become new. It is a supernatural promise. All of God's promises are supernatural. But let it be according to our faith. If you don't understand, right? I just looked at uh, a little bit of um, quickly yesterday or sometime. All the word that says to have knowledge and think, I think it's about 1472 or something like that, you know, times where God tells us in the word that we've got to have understanding and knowledge. Isn't that interesting? But if we have understanding beyond just, uh, you know, because we've had a lot of preaching over the years, confess the word, confess the words, and that's good. But our confession from today on is going to be when we confess the word that the God of the Bible, the supernatural God that caused the cloud to stop ISIS getting into Israel, right, is the same supernatural God that spoke the word in the beginning in creation and has spoken this word to us. Therefore, it is a supernatural word that we need to take hold of. Now you begin to understand why it doesn't work for some people. Doesn't work. People say, oh, it doesn't work for me. Well, it doesn't work for such and such. I've tried that. Because without faith, without understanding, wisdom, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So God's calling us as a group of people to take a hold of this word and begin to apply it. Begin to apply it to our lives as a supernatural promise. My first point tonight, today, was the word of God is supernatural. Right? That's what I want us to get a hold of. That's what I want us to understand. That the word of God is supernatural. You see how we can move into the supernatural? And God's calling us to move into today because we're in that season where God is going to pour out of his spirit and is beginning to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And we are here to see that. Amen. We are born for such a time as this. We are here to see God let his river flow from the throne down to this planet. Because our God is a God of the supernatural. Amen. So... By believing that his word is supernatural, not just another good guidance of how to live or good principles, not just words that God has given to us, but by believing that this word is supernatural, that his promise and it is a supernatural book, we can move into a position of seeing the supernatural begin to operate. Are you with me this morning? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It is so important. So here was Jeremiah suffering rebuke. You know, he was complaining in verse 16. He said, I, all of a sudden, the words of God came life to me and I ate them. I took them. I took a hold of them. I made them my own. I believed what we're talking about this morning, that the words that God has given me are supernatural words. They are not just mere book or mere words. They are a supernatural word that God has given to us. And so we need to see and understand. Here was Jeremiah. And what it did was, it's interesting, it rejoiced his heart. <laughs> he began to get life again. He began, his heart began to rejoice, right? Because he saw the word of God as something that came to him and became life to him. And it rejoiced his heart and it caused him to know that he is called. Isn't that something? Do you know you're called of God? I tell you, it's important to know that. And this is what Jeremiah's experience was. He all of a sudden he realized he was called of God. Hallelujah. I, I, oh, man. See what the word of the Lord does? The word of God rejoices your heart. 
when you begin to understand they are not mere words, they are supernatural words with the backing of Almighty God. And you know, it's absolutely amazing. They have the backing of the throne of God. They have the backing that Jesus crucified he was crucified on the cross and defeated Satan. And you know, and you and I now have been called to raised up to continue to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. This is what we're called for. Hallelujah. There is a move of God that's happening in this world and all around here in Australia at the moment. That is absolutely phenomenal. It's just a preparation for what God is about to do. Those that have gone out west for a number of years, it's been dry, it's been, you know, difficult. But I want to tell you something, it's all in preparation because we believe the word of the Lord. God wants to set little fires here, there and everywhere in Australia to see a mighty move of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to see Australia. I want to see the river flowing from the throne, coming down and touching people's lives and people being set, set free. Hallelujah. So eat the word. But eat it differently to what you're used to. Eat it understanding that the promises that God has given us are supernatural. See, you can, you know, I, I, there's all different ways of cooking a steak. All different ways of, of eating it. But let's eat the word knowing that we have a supernatural God and that these words are supernatural. Because there's not a person sitting in this meeting here to, not today, I believe, that does not want to see and experience the supernatural power of God. Is that right? Amen. We're believing for it. We're praying for it. We're taking hold of it. We're believing for it. And so it's all there for us. The Word of God is supernatural. And what about we all say that together? The Word of God is supernatural. The Word of God is supernatural. Once more, the Word of God is supernatural. Hallelujah. I tell you what, this group of people are going to rise to a new place in God we're going to you know <laughs> we're going to move into that area of believing God and standing firm where others want to give up right we're, we're picking up our game now it is time to pick up our game as our pastor has been telling us for some time but not only just to have Jesus as a saviour but to have him as our Lord, amen in other words he is sovereign, he knows the beginning and the end, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called, Jeremiah realised he was called because he saw the word of the Lord that came to him was in power and demonstration and full of authority and full of the supernatural he saw the words that came to him were like that so therefore the joy of the Lord rose in his heart he got excited oh I'm just about to run around the room I tell you oh he got excited because he realized that the word of the Lord was powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword and would not return unto him void that's what the word of the Lord does and so I want to encourage you this morning to begin to see that this book and the promises in here are supernatural they are real they are powerful. They are quicker than two, any two-edged sword. And so it's important. Now, I want to make a statement. I was going to go to John 17, that's the verse 3. We might just put that up quickly. John 17, verse 3. Saviour to Lord. I am absolutely convinced that the believer is to maintain a life in God and Jesus if he is going to live forever and ever. A lot of people accept Jesus and think they can live like the devil. I don't believe that. Right? I believe that God wants us to not only be, have him as our saviour, but to continue. If you continue in my word, you shall be free and free indeed. 
Amen. There is a continuation. And so this morning, I'm sharing with you something that is of revelation to my heart that these promises are supernatural, help you to lift your game and to be able to continue in the word of the Lord and see the greatest move and the greatest revival that we've ever seen. Because the word is supernatural, let's believe in supernatural things and they will happen. Are you with me this morning? So, I, I, you know, if I lay hands on the sick, I just don't take it as a word that we should do as a preacher or not a preacher or just a, you know, whatever, doorkeeper in the house of the Lord or whatever, just a salvation. I take it as the supernatural will happen. You with me? You see, see the difference? So if I say I am more than a conqueror, then I believe for the supernatural to happen. I am more than a conqueror because I serve a God that backs his word. Right? If, if no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and there are many things, and that the devil will try every angle that he can. No weapon formed against me, you know, will prosper. I step into the supernatural because I believe that the supernatural is the backing of God Almighty, and He backs His word to perform it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. We are, oh, man, this is powerful. So, you know, it's, it's you know, it, even the blood cleanses. You know that that's supernatural. Yeah. Amen. It is supernatural that the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin and I've needed it. <laughs> you know, temptation, the flesh is very strong. We blame the devil for a lot of fleshly things. The flesh is very, but the Bible says he'll make a way of escape. Right? So I believe that. So if temptation comes along my way and it gets, I get a lot of temptation around Christmas time, pork and, you know, all that, you know, other goodies that are around about there, you know, and I will enjoy myself, don't worry. <laughs> but whatever it is, whatever temptation to go beyond where you are and you know it's not right, there is a way of escape because we serve a supernatural God. Oh, man, a lot. We serve a supernatural God. God. All right. So John 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, right? What I'm talking about this morning, that, you may, that they may know. Now, this is the prayer of Jesus just before he went to heaven. And there is so much in this John 17. That they may know you, the only true God. You know, people's concept of God is way off. What I'm sharing this morning is helping us to see that the God we serve is supernatural. He can put a cloud in Israel and stop ISIS. He can do anything. Six-day war was another example where he, he, he protected Israel. And so, uh, but we're the church. <laughs> Hallelujah as well. And, and, you know, people's concept of God is so way off. You know, let me explain something very simply. The thing is that, <clears throat> let, you know, Jesus died for the whole world, didn't he? Yeah. We know that. The whole world. But you know the reality of that is only for those who receive that truth? Isn't that something? Yeah. If people don't receive that truth because of their concept of God, and Jesus is saying before he went back to heaven, just before he went back to heaven, he, he's saying, Father, right? And this is like that they may know you. The only true God. There are so many gods, especially in our Western world, we think, oh, they, we don't have idols and things. We have so many idols, it's unbelievable. Uh, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That is a supernatural place that God wants to bring you and I to, that we'll know who God is, the Father. We'll know who Jesus Christ is, and we know that the Father sent him. And see, the word of God, can I say, is full absolutely full of the supernatural. Are you ready? Are you ready to go to a new level? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to begin 
to take a stand and say, the devil might have come, but he has no part in me. He has no claim in me. Hallelujah. He can try every angle and he does. And if you continue in my word, you shall be free indeed. So, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Through who? God. Right? They are mighty through God. Let's stand together in the presence of the Lord. We're just going to believe that God can do anything here this morning. Amen. We're going to take a hold of the supernatural God and we're going to see the manifestation of God in your life and in my life and in everybody's uh, life. Let your faith rise this morning. You say, oh, but it hasn't worked for me. It works for you. It'll work for you. It'll work for you. It'll work for you. It'll work for you if you believe that the supernatural God is in the Word. Supernatural God is in the world. Thank you, Father. This morning, because this Word is supernatural, I pray that every one of us will begin to have revelation and we begin to believe in supernatural things and they will happen. God, we pray that we call on you, Jesus, as Lord. We lift our game this morning, Lord, to a total place of just trust. Trust. Lord, we trust you to back your word in Jesus' name.